Hi, it's Katrina. From a pharaoh's tomb to a gigantic diamond, here are nine famous historical curses. Number 9. Rasputin Born over a century ago in Siberia, Grigory Rasputin came from a poor family with poor prospects. However, over the course of his life, he won the respect and patronage of the Russian Tsarina Alexandra and became her personal advisor. Rasputin was able to get into her good graces by being a self-proclaimed magician. He claimed he used his mystical healing powers to treat the Tsarina's sick son, Alexei, who suffered from hemophilia. Historians speculate that Rasputin used hypnotism and herbs to keep Alexei calm and forbade doctors from messing with him too much, and that actually helped him. Aristocrats in St. Petersburg at first were fascinated by the mysterious monk, but Rasputin's peasant heritage was not good. The nobles found the idea of a peasant advising a Tsar and Tsarina as unacceptable, so they tried to assassinate him. The story goes that Prince Felix Yusupov, who was married to the Tsarina's niece, invited Rasputin over for dinner. He laced the food with cyanide, and when that didn't work, he shot him multiple times. When he tried to get away, the prince and his friends shot him again and beat him, castrated him, and finally threw his body into the river. However, before any of that happened, Rasputin supposedly had sent the Tsar a letter that prophesied that with his demise, the Russian royal family would also fall. Rasputin warned that if a family member were to kill him, the Tsar and his family wouldn't live to see more than two years. Some interpreted this to mean that he had placed a curse on them. Regardless, it came true. Less than a year later, the Tsar, his wife, and their five young children were brutally murdered by the revolutionaries. Number 8. Tutankhamun's Tomb The discovery of Tutankhamun's tomb was one of the most incredible finds of the 20th century. Outside of the tomb, a stone was found inscribed with an ominous threat. Death shall come on swift wings to him who disturbs the peace of the king. If this stone actually existed, it didn't stop Egyptologists Howard Carter and Lord Carnarvon from opening the tomb to worldwide fanfare in 1922. Lord Carnarvon, who had been in poor health before going to Egypt, died four months later from an infected mosquito bite he made worse from shaving. Back in England, a few hours after his death, Carnarvon's beloved dog Susie yelped and died. Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, upon hearing about the death, declared it was because of the curse. Six months after visiting the tomb, financier George J. Gold I died of a fever. Other deaths associated with the tomb are Wolf Joel, a South African millionaire, and A.C. Mace, a member of Howard Carter's archaeological team. Carter's personal secretary was found smothered in his bed in 1929. However, the majority of people who came in contact with the tomb survived to old age. In fact, Howard Carter himself lived to age 64 before dying of cancer. The man who guarded the burial chamber for seven years, Sergeant Richard Adamson, also lived into old age, dying in 1982. Historians say the reality is that the curse is mostly fiction. Mostly. While it's likely that all royal tombs in Egypt had a curse on them, Carter himself circulated the story about the curse to prevent potential grave robberies. Number 7. The Templar's Curse By the 12th century AD, the Knights Templar had become one of the most powerful organizations in Europe. They began as one of the many militaristic orders in the Catholic Church, protecting pilgrims in the Middle East and establishing hospitals. As time progressed, however, they amassed a fortune, which they used in an early form of banking. A persistent rumor suggested a lot of their wealth came from the lost treasure of King Solomon. Emboldened by this rumor, King Philip IV of France began borrowing heavily from the Templars, but with no intention to pay back the debt. In 1307, Philip IV conspired with Pope Clement V to destroy the Templars. The Pope stripped the Grand Master Jacques de Molay of his duties and he was imprisoned for seven years and tortured. He and other knights of his order were burned alive in 1314. His death, though, was slightly different. The pyres of his fellow knights were built so that the victims died quickly. However, de Molay's pyre was built in such a way so that he died a slow and agonizing death. That allowed him a chance at revenge. According to legend, as de Molay died, he cursed each and every one of the people there who had voted for his death and said they would die within the year. Now, within a year, King Philip IV died of a stroke and Pope Clement succumbed to a fatal disease. By 1328, all of Philip's sons and grandsons were also dead. People became so afraid of the curse that rulers refused to collaborate with the cursed royal family. 
As a side note, in June 2011, Pope Benedict XVI, remember him, apologized for the murder of Demolay and acknowledged that he had been a victim of false accusations. Number 6. Cursed Sarcophagus in 1923, during excavations of the ancient Phoenician city of Byblos, the heavy rain caused a hill to collapse. This natural disaster actually allowed archaeologists to find nine rock-cut tombs of Phoenician kings. One of them was the cursed sarcophagus of King Ahiram. Dated back to roughly 1000 BC, Ahiram's limestone sarcophagus is the only evidence of this mysterious king. No records exist of him in Phoenician literature. What little we know comes from the inscription on the sarcophagus, which has fascinated scholars for decades. It is incredibly significant because the inscription is considered to be the oldest known example of the fully developed Phoenician alphabet. Also, despite the heavy influence of Egyptian culture and religion in Byblos, the bas-relief on the sarcophagus reflects a uniquely Phoenician style. But back to why we're here, the curse, of course. The text itself reveals that Ahiram's son Itobal constructed the sarcophagus. The rest of it is a curse to protect the tomb from grave robbers. Unfortunately, it didn't work. By the time archaeologists stumbled upon the find, looters had already picked the tomb clean. But we don't know what sort of terrible things may have befallen the looters, do we? Number 5. The Pella Curse Tablet Curse tablets were texts from ancient Greece scratched onto thin pieces of lead. People would ask a specific god or deceased person to do something to the person being cursed or make that person do something. For example, fall in love or not get married. Because haven't we all done that at some point? In 1986, archaeologists were excavating Pella, which was the ancient capital of Macedonia. During the excavations, they found a curse tablet written in Doric Greek that dated back to 375 to 350 BC. The ancient Greeks not only believed in multiple gods, but also in magic and spells. These curse tablets were quite popular and were made to last. About 1,600 Greek tablets inscribed with curses have been discovered, and they were written on metals and baked clay because it was believed that the curse would last as long as the object did. The Pella tablet is an inscribed scroll and is the oldest of all the tablets discovered so far. The text of the curse reveals not only the purpose, but also the writer. Linguists studying the text says that the writer, a woman named Dagina, was probably from the lower class in Western Greece. Dagina was in love with a man named Dionysophon. Unfortunately, he was going to marry another woman. To prevent that from happening, Dagina created the scroll pleading the gods of the underworld to make it so that Dionysophon loved only her. Whether or not her curse worked is sadly lost to history. Too bad they didn't inscribe the result on the tablet. Number 4. Timur's Tomb Timur, also known as Tamerlane, was a nobleman, warlord, and renowned military tactician who controlled a vast swath of Asia during the 14th century. He is known as one of the most ruthless invaders ever. While his warfare killed 17 million people, he was also a patron of architecture and the arts. In 1941, Joseph Stalin sent a team of archaeologists to open Timur's tomb in Samarkand, Uzbekistan. Local residents and Muslim clergy were horrified, and for good reason. Upon opening Timur's coffin, the team discovered an inscription, Whoever opens my tomb shall unleash an invader more terrible than I. Two days later, Adolf Hitler's troops invaded Russia. Approximately 26 million people died as a result. After a few months, Stalin started believing in the curse. In 1942, Stalin ordered Timur's remains reinterred in Samarkand in accordance with Islamic tradition. Soon afterward, the Germans surrendered at Stalingrad, thus ending their campaign against the Russians. Curse or history? Number 3. The Hope Diamond Legend says that French merchant Jean-Baptiste Tavernier stole a 115-carat blue diamond from the eye of a Hindu idol in India. The diamond was then called the Tavernier Blue. One version of the story claims that the priests, upon finding the gem missing, cursed whoever possessed it. Tavernier sold the gem to King Louis XIV of France in 1669 and retired a wealthy man. Tavernier was later mauled to death by dogs because of this sacrilege. The diamond was recut and it became known as the French Blue. King Louis XIV would eventually die of gangrene and all of his legitimate children died except for one. When King Louis XVI inherited the diamond, he and his wife, Marie Antoinette, would eventually be beheaded during the French Revolution. Between Louis XIV and Louis XVI, other people who wore the diamond died or suffered extreme misfortune. Eventually, Lord Francis Hope of England came into possession of the diamond and renamed it, after himself, of course. 
He married an American showgirl and the pair squandered their fortune. Eventually, they sold the diamond, but they died in poverty. Evelyn Walsh McLean bought the stone in 1912. Soon after, her son was killed in a car accident, her daughter committed suicide, and her husband left her for another woman. After she died, her children sold the diamond to the Smithsonian National Museum of Natural History in 1958. The postman who delivered the diamond lost his leg soon after the delivery. His wife and dog died, and his house caught on fire as well. This is one diamond that's better to see from afar. Number 2. The Curse of Tippy Canoe This curse is known by several names. Tecumseh's Curse, Zero Year Curse, Twenty Year Curse, The Presidential Curse, and The Twenty Year Presidential Jinx. There are two versions of this story. One version says that the Native American leader Tecumseh cursed William Henry Harrison after Harrison's troops emerged victorious at the Battle of Tippecanoe. The curse was that every president elected every 20 years would die in office. Ever since Harrison became president in 1840, every president elected to office in 20-year intervals has died while serving as president. Harrison died of pneumonia, four presidents were assassinated, Abraham Lincoln, James A. Garfield, William McKinley, and John F. Kennedy. Both Warren G. Harding and Franklin D. Roosevelt died of natural causes in office. If the pattern held, Ronald Reagan was supposed to be the next victim of the curse. He was, in fact, the target of an assassination attempt. However, he survived and the curse was apparently lifted. Number 1. Dead Man's Chair According to local legend, anyone who sits in the chair that once belonged to Thomas Busby will die. Busby was a thug, thief, and a drunk who lived in North Yorkshire in the latter part of the 1600s. Busby married Elizabeth Awady, the daughter of a criminal who lived in a nearby village. Busby and her father, Daniel Awady, quickly became partners in crime. In 1702, Busby and Daniel argued. The details are kind of vague, so no one really knows what happened. Later that day, Busby returned to the inn he owned, drunk and angry, to find Daniel sitting in his favorite chair. Awady was there to take Elizabeth away. Busby threw him out, and that night, he murdered him. Busby was arrested, tried, and sentenced to die. Here, versions of the story vary. One version claims Busby was granted his last wish to have a final drink at his own inn and sit in his favorite chair. On leaving, Busby declared anyone who sat in his chair would die. A second version claims Busby shouted out the curse while being taken to his execution. Various deaths have been attributed to the chair, ranging from murders and car accidents to airmen in World War II never returning from their missions. Eventually, the body count grew so high, the pub owner hung the chair on the wall so that no one would ever sit in the chair of death again. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye.